Welcome to our third video on how to use a VTE cash book system. In videos one and two, we've dealt with the setup and basic recording of current accounts, transactions, and also cash coming in and out and paying business transactions from a private bank account. In this video, I want to move on quite a long way really and look at how to deal with the scenario where you're selling online for example and you're getting money coming in via paypal or via a credit card merchant account so if we just move on to vt um as we covered in videos one and two bank accounts in a in a accounting software terms doesn't mean just bank accounts it also means effectively pots of money they're sort of accounts which act like bank accounts so whereas we had a pot of money for cash coming in and a pot of money for business expenses paid privately where we added new bank accounts called cash takings and private credit card we need another new bank account well, two new bank accounts, really. The first one, we're going to be dealing with PayPal. So we need to open a new bank account in VT called PayPal. So we click on the new bank account. The name is PayPal and we just OK to save. And now we've got PayPal on our drop down list of bank accounts. Now, the bank account at the top here, this is from the payment money in, money out screen. And this is money into PayPal or money out of PayPal. Now, this is quite, hopefully quite easy to get your head around because PayPal is, in fact, another bank account for you. Your customers pay money into your PayPal account and you pay money out of your PayPal accounts as suppliers or you draw money out of your PayPal account into your normal business account. So it is another bank account. So we've set it up as such in the system. Now, you've really got a choice as to how you deal with PayPal, how often you enter the transactions. You can either do it daily. You can log into PayPal every day, look at the transactions in and out and enter them. Or you, could, you can do it monthly. And what is quite useful is that you can get a CSV download file from the PayPal website where you can download the data into a spreadsheet and then you can manipulate the spreadsheet to give you a figure of total monies in from the customers, how much money PayPal have taken in their charges, all the payments you've made out to suppliers and all the transfers you've made back to your business current account. So they're really the four aspects of the PayPal money. Now, whether you're doing it daily, weekly, monthly or whatever, it doesn't matter. And actually looking at the PayPal side is and, and how to get the CSV file out is outside the scope of this video. I may well do another video later on showing how you get this information out and how you can manipulate it in a spreadsheet. Um, but I think once you've seeing the, the basics you should be able to work out how to enter the transactions in the first peculiarity of paypal is that they take money off you every time someone pays money into you they take their share now your sales in your accounts and your tax return must be the amount of money they your customer pays them the customer sent to you so if for example the customer sent you a hundred quid and PayPal have taken £5 off, so there's only £95 gone onto your PayPal account, your sales in your accounts is still the 100 but you have an expense of 5 for the bank charges, leaving just £95 in the PayPal account. So at first, I think what we need to do is show, that, show how that transaction would be. So we've got the bank account of PayPal. The type of transaction, it's number one for payment or number three for a receipt. Well, as we discussed in earlier videos, a receipt in accounting software terms means money in. So it's a number three for a receipt, money in. Today's the date. 
and well, let's just put one transaction on from one particular customer who's Mrs Jones and she's paid this hundred pounds to us for some set she's bought something for a hundred quid say from our website so that's a hundred pounds going into our PayPal account so the PayPal account at that moment showed a hundred pounds but as we know PayPal take off their share so we put in a new payment to PayPal of the five pounds expenses now there's a here we can have a bit of controversy as to what what the nature of that expense is some people would put it down as a cost of sale um but really it may well be better shown as a bank charge and i'm going to show it as a bank charge at the end of the day as long as you're consistent that's fine but what really matters is that the hundred is, is what they paid for you for it and the five pound is what paypal have taken which has left you with 95 pound in your paypal account now you've got a choice now you have leave it in your paypal account or you do a transfer over if you know you're going to spend some money by paypal you'd leave it in your paypal account if you know you're not and that you actually need the money in your current account you do a transfer over so to start with let's say we're going to do a transfer so it's a number one it's a payment out of the paypal account so it's a payment out and we've just type in as transfer to current account for the balance which is 95 pound the analysis ledger here is bank and the account is current account so it's coming from the paypal account to the current account and now we see the end balance in paypal is nil so if you did click on that button on your PayPal account to send the 95 quid over, it would be, well, let, let's do it. Let's say you've done that. So your PayPal account on your PayPal website is showing nil. This is the bookkeeping side, which we're mirroring what's really happened with save. And now we, when we click on the current account, we see we've now got 95 coming in from the current, from the um, PayPal account to bolster up the current account balance if we click on the paypal account we see the money coming in we see the bank charges and the money going out so that was mrs jones's money and that's what's happened to it let's do something let's build up on that now another customer also bought something off the website today this is sally jones Maybe Mrs. Jones's daughter, who knows? And she's bought £50 worth of stuff off her website. So it's income, sales. So now PayPal's showing the £50. But of course we know that PayPal charges will come off. Now this is a good bit of, a really good feature of VT software. At the moment in the paid to receive from column, we've got nothing. Now it's going to be PayPal charges like it was last time. Now if we just, just type in the P, and it guesses all the various P's. Now this will make it for really fast data entry. So it's correctly guessed PayPal charges. So we can click on the next button. We can use a tab key to move forward. And it's also correctly click, correctly guessed expenses bank charges. The only thing that isn't right is that it isn't £5 because that was the last transaction. So we can override the £5 and make it £2.50. And then click to move on to the next, or tab to move on to the next line. 50 has come in, 250 has been snazzled by PayPal already, which has left £47.50. Now, instead of transferring it over to your current account, you, you've decided to buy something online. So you, it's a payment out, and it's to Amazon. I don't know if Amazon take PayPal. But maybe they do. And you're going to spend £40 and you're buying a computer hard drive now for 40 pound it's it's a consumable it's not going to last for years so it's an expense and we find a sort of the best heading we can i mean stationery and printing is a good one because stationery it's like office supplies or you could put it maybe to sundries 
Let in, let's put it to sundries for want of an argument. So 50 came in, 250 was taken by PayPal, 40 pounds been paid out by PayPal, and it's left you with seven pound fifty. So and that's in the PayPal account, and really speaking, it's not worth your effort transferring just seven pound fifty. So that's the next transaction that we've had later on today. We save it, and now we look at the PayPal account, and we can see. The 50s come in, the 250s going out, the 40, and that's £7.50 which is left over. Now, tomorrow, for example, we come back to look at entering the PayPal transactions. And we once we've clicked on PayPal, the opening balance is at £7.50 that we finished with yesterday. So now we'll put on, you know, the next day's takings will be money in, less the PayPal charges, less whatever payments have gone out, and you'll have a new end balance. So that just shows how you can use the running totals in PayPal. And of course, all these should mirror your online banking screen for your PayPal account. If PayPal isn't showing you they owe you £7.50, you've got a problem again. You've not put something on properly. So that, now that's fine. That, I think that's probably covered the basics of PayPal. The other thing I said we'd do is covering where customers pay by credit card, where you've got a merchant account set up with NatWest Streamline or, or some of the merchant accounts. So again, that's another pot of money. So let's show it as such. A new bank account, and we'll call it NatWest Streamline. Okay, now we've got a new bank account called NatWest Streamline. So, first thing that happens, um, Mrs. Mrs. Green buys some stuff on your internet site. So it's a free for a receipt. Money coming in is a receipt. And it's Mrs. Smith. No, Mrs. Green, I said, didn't I? And she's bought 100 quids worth of stuff, which is income sales. And it's just gone to your Streamline account. Now, some merchant accounts will transfer the money over at the end of the day. Some will transfer it over at a week, a week later or two weeks later. It really depends on your provider. But what the chances are, though, if this Mrs. Green's money won't come through on the current account in one lump as Mrs. Green 100 quid. It'll be mixed up with the other sales, which which was Joe Brown, who's also bought something on the internet this day for £50. So you've now got 150 coming in. Now at the moment, that's sat in your NatWest Streamline account. So we save that and we close it. It's not hit your current account yet. It, but, you know, the customers have paid and it's sat in the Streamline. Now, depends, like I say, on your agreement. That might be coming over tonight, at mid the midnight transfer run. Or you might have to wait a week, two weeks, or even a month to see that money. But when you do see that money, say it's tomorrow, what we do is a transfer from the Streamline account to your current account. And here's, this is where we can use the transfers. So say it's tomorrow. Just click on that tip tomorrow and it's transfer to the current account, transfer from the NatWest Streamline account for that 150. And we save it. Now when we look at the Streamline account, the money's coming in and then the next day the money's going out. So the Streamline account should always be a nil balance except for what's in transit. And we look at the current account and we now see this transfer coming in of 150. Now that 150 should be the figure that's shown in your bank statement. So on the Streamline account you had the two transactions, this time you've got just the one transaction which on this current account it should show, ex ex should mirror what's on your bank statement or your internet banking. That'll make your bank reconciliation a lot easier. And if we could click on the reconcile bank accounts these are the four, once these four transactions have cleared on your bank statement or on screen banking, your balance per the bank will equal £927.50. So that's your proof. 
which is of course the whole point of a reconciliation which we covered in the first video. That's enough for this video. I've shown you how to deal with PayPal and also credit card merchant accounts, both for monies coming in. The answer being open a new bank account. It may seem like a lot of hard work, but I can guarantee it'll save you time in the long run because it'll make it easier to reconcile and balance the books. So I hope you've enjoyed watching and hope to see you for our next video, um, which will be dealing with um, shops, cafes, guest houses, pubs, where you've got a mix of sales coming in, a mix of customers paying by cash, check, credit card, and also the usual mix of where the money goes to, whether it's to payments out for wages, supplies, money banked or whatever. So um, that really just brings everything together.